Hello and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. We are going to be talking math today. So as you can see from everything that I've got here, I wanted to, to go over some things about math and so I pulled down a lot of our math things and I know that for myself, I stress a lot about making sure that we're learning math, making sure that she's happy learning math, and for it to be something that we both are enjoying. And so I wanted to give you some ideas. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I am a homeschool mom to a first grader, and we love all things books and homeschool, and it's something that we love to share with how we do our homeschool, because every homeschool is very unique, and I'm hoping that any videos that we make are just a help for you and that maybe you could gather something that will help you in your homeschool because no matter how smooth a homeschool may run sometimes you get a little speed bump and we can all learn from each other if this is your first time here welcome and if you haven't hit that subscribe button please hit that subscribe button for me so let's go ahead and get started the first thing that I want to start with today is kind of the curriculum or the books or the workbooks that you could get for math. Now, realize most of this that I'm going to be talking about today is going to be first grade material. But I think a lot of these tips and tricks and ideas could work for a lot of the elementary grade and possibly even up into the other grades. So I wanted to show you everything that I've got here. So it may look a little bit ridiculous that I have this many book options, but most of them we don't use every day. And most of them are just really as an extra resource for when we need the option. Do I need all these options? Maybe, maybe not, but let's get into here and let me show you what I've got. The first thing that I have here is our actual full-time curriculum, and we use Dimensions Math from Singapore Math. I will put a card up here. We have multiple videos on this where I do a flip through, and then we also have a few videos where we actually do a lesson so you can see how a lesson works. Um, we are very happy with this program. I love the way that it teaches, but just like anything, and even as adults, sometimes doing the same thing over and over can get repetitive, and sometimes you just need a little bit of a new view from something. One thing that we made a little difference with this during our first quarter of first grade was right off the bat, she was wanting to do the writing in the textbook and the workbook. Now, the teacher's manual says that you actually don't have to do the writing in the textbook, but that you can, but that the workbook is like the pages. But like I said, at the beginning, she was gung-ho, she was ready to do it all, and pretty soon, this became something that she didn't want to do anymore. She didn't want to do the extra writing in it, so that was no big deal. Um, we just, we still did the textbook, of course, we just didn't fill in the answers. And so, as you can see here, you don't have to fill these in. You can verbally do them. This is the workbook where we're going to go in and we're going to fill them out. Now, we kept going into first grade and we were still starting to get a little bit of discouragement from she felt there was too much of the workbook. You know what? This isn't writing class. So, I would ask her verbally and I would write in the answers that she told me. And I even made myself a little note here that we did this page verbally. So that helped immensely that she didn't have to end up doing any writing. And we also slowed down just a little bit because she is quite good at math, I feel. But I don't know that we have to do a lesson every single day with it. Um, so there were some when there were maybe four or five pages of the workbook and four or five pages of the textbook, which that doesn't happen that often, just so you know. I would go ahead and just split it up and we would split that into two days. And so we would do the textbook one day. The next day we would just study the same thing because what's the big deal if we get a little bit more mastery in a subject? And depending, it could be that you 
and your student could possibly need to skip faster, like maybe not do every single lesson if it's something that they're really, really good at. Go ahead, you know, if they've mastered their math facts up to 10 and there's seven lessons in there, you know, you don't have to do all seven lessons if they mastered it at four. So just keep that in mind that you are the homeschool and you can decide what's best for you. This is Life of Fred. The very first book is actually Apples. It's red. This is book two. This is Butterflies. And this is what kind of came to the rescue a little bit when she was getting very discouraged with the worksheets because Fred does not have worksheets. The only thing that there is is a your turn to play section. At the end of every single chapter, you have a your turn to play, you get out a notebook, and they answer these five questions. I also just recently did a little video on this. I'll go ahead and pop that up here. So this is something we have been doing every day. She is asking to do it every single day and she is enjoying it. So I actually have went ahead and got a few more in the series. We have apples, butterflies, cats, and dogs. So if we get through all of those, I will definitely be looking into furthering that because it teaches it differently but she really thinks Fred is funny and I think he's a little bit ridiculous, but she loves him, which means she's enjoying doing the math that she does. And I really do like a lot of the concepts and a lot of the way this is working. So check this out because that's kind of a fun thing. My next idea is to get a themed workbook on something that they really like. Um, she thinks Star Wars is pretty cool. So last year we had the kindergarten math and she really enjoyed getting to get in there and do the work with all of the Star Wars characters. This year, as a little surprise, I ended up getting her this little first grade math to go along. It's something we don't pull out often, but we do have it, and if she ever asks to do it, she can. And also, it's just a really fun little book for if you're kind of maybe unschooling for the day or something, just to have a little something to do. Or, you know, you could take it with you if you were going on a little trip, something you could do in the car or anything like that. But I would definitely recommend having, along with your regular curriculum, or make this your curriculum, you know, you make that choice having a themed workbook. Along with the workbooks, I also have this Tinker Active. We haven't used the math yet. We used the science last year and I ended up getting this for a really good deal. So I went ahead and grabbed it so that we could try it. It says ages six to seven. And so right now we haven't actually used it because I don't really wanna go quite in order yet. So right here, we're counting to 120 on number one. Number two, we're doing place value. And the first two, which I could just skip them and go ahead, but we haven't actually like done the place values and stuff quite yet. That will be coming with our dimensions math pretty quickly. But we already have our Fred and our dimensions and our Star Wars that we're using. So I really think this is something that I'll introduce later into the year. But I do like the Tinker Active, it's fun. You do your lesson and you follow these little green guys. You do a few pages and then at the end you have this like let's tinker. And so you kind of do like different little experiments or engineering and things like that. So this is another idea for a fun little workbook that you could use to change math up a little bit. Again, this doesn't have to be, you know, you're, this isn't going to last all year long that's okay. This doesn't have to be a replacement for a curriculum. This is just an addition to your curriculum to give yourself something different to do occasionally. My very last workbook that I have to show you here is by BrainQuest. This is a great workbook that we took with us when we were road schooling and I like it because it covers so much. It covers phonics, spelling, then shapes and measurement, addition, subtraction, time and money. It has a lot of different things in there. So I do really like this. And then at the back of the book, it has some brain quest cards that you could end up playing. 
So this would be like a book that you could kind of just pull out every once in a while to get a break from any of these. So that's another idea is maybe look for a workbook similar to this that has more than just math so that you could have a day of you're doing the BrainQuest workbook instead of your normal curriculum. Now that we've gone through the workbooks, let's look at a few more options. Back in September, I believe I picked these up on a book outlet haul. I had never seen them before, but they're really neat. And this is something again that you could either add to your curriculum for like something different instead of doing the worksheets maybe do this or forgo the curriculum for a day and maybe just work on the math cards but these are just really neat and it's 40 reusable cards and they're color coded and you can give it to them and it's a little dry erase they can practice their addition they can practice their subtraction i believe they also come in multiplication and division but right now these are the only two i have so this is a different idea too is get out dry erase you don't even have to have these you could just implement that idea of having dry erase that way it's not the pen and the paper it's not the workbook it's just something a little bit different and this is made by flash kids so I have no idea if the book outlet still has these, but I will put my video right here for where I did that. And down in the description, you will be able to go to the book outlet. And I also have a referral code if you're interested. If you have watched any of my videos, you know that we have quite a few different manipulatives. I have the linking blocks, which I love. I didn't bring those down today, but go to my dimensions video and you can see all of them. But these are two different things I wanted to show you. And we have the 10 and 20 frame cards which are magnetic here from learning resources then i have this little abacus here which is also from learning resources and just implementing these sort of things can really make it helpful when you're doing your curriculum for instance if we were doing a lesson and we were talking about i had 10 grapes and my friend ate five of them we could take these over and they can touch them one at a time and see one, two, three, four, five. So you can see we're actually taking them away and we have five left. This is so nice because they can see it visually. They can, it's a tactile thing. They can touch it and kind of really get it going. And sometimes it just helps to do it this way. There have been times where we didn't do the workbook with pen and paper. I would say the question and she would have to give me the answer with this. Now it doesn't work in every single case, but both of these things can be used this way. And this little set comes with all these little paddle boards and then these little magnetic markers. So you can actually take your 10 frame and there's a 10 frame on one side and a 20 frame on the other side. And again, let's say the question is a Dion has two apples and Mary has three apples. How many apples are there total? And so they can lay them down there. You have the yellow and the red, so you could kind of coordinate it with that if you wanted to, or you could be, you could use it the same thing with subtraction. We had five apples, someone ate three yellow ones. How many are left? And then that way they're seeing Again, the math living. They're seeing it actually, why do we need this? This is funner than writing with pen and paper. Now, you may have one that loves pen and paper and mine is like that sometimes, but then other times this is what we need. So there's you another tip. Now, games. So some people may or may not believe this, but you can have a math lesson while playing a game. How much fun would that be, right? And so we have a few options here. My absolute favorite game for this age group is Sum Swamp. This is great for adding and subtracting when you're only ever gonna add to the number 12 and you're not gonna be doing any double digit subtraction. So I feel like this is on point for a lot of five-year-olds or kindergarten, first grade, some something in there, five and six years old, kindergarten, first grade, this is it. This is my favorite game. I buy this for all of my family that is in this age group. And I think it is fantastic way to make this super fun. So you go around the swamp 
you move your little character, you roll your dice, and then there is an operation die. So you take it and you decide if you, you add or you subtract. And then you figure out how many spaces you can move. And then you also are gonna be talking about odds and evens. I love this game so much. If you can only buy one game, in my opinion, this is money well, well spent. Um, especially if you get it right at kindergarten because we still love it in first grade. We're still utilizing it very often. So if you're having struggles, you're having issues, bring in a game. Even if you're not, bring in a game just to make it funner. And also on, you know, if you school five days a week, possibly think about maybe one of those days, game school. And that's where you play your games instead of the actual curriculum. This is another game by Learning Resources that I feel is very appropriate for this kindergarten, first grade. You have these little gumballs that have addition and subtraction equations on the back of them. If you're able to answer the question, you get to keep the gumball. You spin this and that tells you how many of the gumballs you can get out. And then you answer these. If you're able to answer the equation correctly, you get to keep the gumball. The person with the most gumballs at the end wins. Really easy setup, really easy cleanup. This is for two to four players. Another really nice game from Learning Resources. Another game to possibly add to the homeschool is these are addition dominoes. They also have subtraction and I'm sure they may make multiplication and division also, but it's just a regular set of dominoes and you want to try to connect. So your one plus, one plus two, you would try to connect to a three, three plus one, try to connect to a four and you would just build your dominoes along the way. Again, these are just fun ways to make math a little bit different when you might be having a little bit of a struggle. These two games right here I got as a set on Amazon. It was the two for a certain price. I can't remember what that is now. Um, if I remember, I will put that somewhere on here. But it's by Logic Roots. So we haven't actually used this one yet because it's dealing with mostly two digit numbers and there is some subtraction of one digit numbers, but it's just a little too advanced for us right now. So we haven't actually tried this yet, but it's very, very similar to Ocean Raiders. And this is addition. And so again, you're looking at single and double digits for your addition. That's something that we are able to do where we're not, we haven't done much with the subtraction yet. This is pretty fun. Also, she seemed to enjoy it. I don't love the puzzle pieces. They're just really, really cheap feeling. I don't love the puzzle pieces. I wish they had put a little more quality into that. Here's the board. I feel like the board is a standard board quality. It's pretty good thickness and um, it seems to be covered pretty well, but you sometimes get shot through these little tunnels and then you have to start at a new number and so you would roll and you would have to add onto this number. It is fun. It is really nice to have these options when you are having a game school day, but I can't speak for the cloud hoppers too much because we haven't actually done it, but it is made by Logic Roots and so I'm glad I do have both sets because it's nice to have a dedicated game of subtraction and addition. And then my last game here is by Learning Resources. Again, I love Learning Resources. I think they have just some fantastic material choices. But this is a, it's called Buy It Right. And so you're shopping and you're dealing with um, buying things. And so you're adding or you're subtracting. There's just different things. You're dealing with money. Um, there were two different, like pretty popular buying games. And I chose this one because it grew with us a little bit more where the other one, I felt like we would outgrow it rather quickly. And please forgive the way this looks in here because I dropped it earlier and the money flew everywhere. So that was real fun. All this was separated, but that's okay. No big deal. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're dealing with buying all of these objects and you're going around this big board right here and so you really can 
change this to work for so many age groups and that's what I really really liked about it it says ages five to nine and I think it's it's just really nice having all the options so you have like level three a way that you could play for younger levels right here you would use bills only and then you have the option of using coins only I did choose this one because I felt like it had so much more flexibility and when I'm buying games I kind of want to get the most I can out of the game. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope that you found some like tips or tricks to help you if you're struggling with a section of math, just some ideas of what you could do to kind of help that along. Understand you're not alone. There's always going to be something that a homeschool family is struggling with and it could be that each year it's something different. It could be one year that you just can't seem to get any of it right. But one other thing I didn't mention earlier is if you have a curriculum such as Dimensions Math, before you like toss the curriculum and just be like, this doesn't work for us anymore, try these options, but also go back and read your teacher's manual because one year we were having some struggles with reading. I went back, I read my teacher's manual and I discovered some things I missed the first time. So go back through here, go back through your teacher's manual, make sure there's not something that you've possibly read over and at the time it didn't really apply to you, but now it really applies to you. So definitely search out your teacher's manual if you have a curriculum that has a teacher's manual. If you don't, you know, just kind of possibly take a break, find you one of these like cheaper options of just getting a workbook or something and that way you don't have to invest in a full curriculum again because just know there are going to be little hiccups along the way and sometimes honestly we're just tired of doing school and it may simply be you need a break or maybe there's just a rough patch going and it's not even school related but it's going over into school please give me a thumbs up if you liked this i really hope it was helpful for you if you haven't joined my team i would ask that you hit that subscribe button and also hit that little bell so that you know when i'm posting videos i'll see you in my next one